Eyes Wide Shut is a film that's written and directed by Stanley Kubrick and stars Tom Cruise and Nicole Kidman. So Eyes Wide Shut isn't a film that won any patron poll or subscriber poll. It came really close in winning this month's subscriber poll. Pan's Labyrinth had the edge and ended up winning. I have a review on that as well if you want to check that out. But I decided I would talk about this film anyway because I've been getting a lot of requests for it. And also, it's Christmas time, and I feel like this is the perfect time for me to actually talk about this film. And also kind of wanted to give this to you guys as a kind of surprise Christmas gift. And it's just a film that I've really been wanting to talk about for quite some time. Because for those of you who have followed this channel for a while, you guys know that Stanley Kubrick is my all-time favorite filmmaker. He's the one that really inspired me to want to be a filmmaker and got me to view the art of filmmaking in a lot more analytical way and admire it a lot more on a more deeper level. But before I really dive into my personal thoughts about this, there's one incredibly important question that we have to answer. So, a lot like the film Die Hard that is infamous for having these ongoing debates whether or not it's an actual Christmas film, Eyes Wide Shut, I think, is another kind of film that kind of sparks the same kind of debate on, you know, whether or not it's a genuine Christmas film or not. But, honestly, it just depends on what you define to be a Christmas film. Because, in order for you to call something a Christmas film, if your standard is that it has to have Christmas as, like, a crucial plot element to the story, or something, like, in the vein of that, then, arguably, it's not a Christmas film. But if you define a Christmas film... To just take place during Christmas and to have a kind of thematic element and at least embrace the atmosphere of the holidays and of Christmas time, then I do think that Eyes Wide Shut does constitute as a Christmas film because Stanley Kubrick wanted the audience to know that it's Christmas time where this entire film is taking place between all the lights that are in the streets, between some of the times that the concept gets brought up, and the fact that there's a Christmas tree in almost every single place that he walks into. Stanley Kubrick purposely gave this film a Christmas aesthetic to it and a Christmas atmosphere, which kind of raises another question, which is why does Stanley Kubrick specifically choose Christmas time for his film setting and atmosphere? Um, I'm sure that there's plenty of reasons as to why that is, and people kind of have their own interpretations and their own explanations for why he think he chose that. But just my personal interpretation of it I kind of think that he wanted it to take place during Christmas because Christmas at its core in America is traditionally a Christian holiday where we celebrate the birth of Jesus. And I think he wanted that to serve as a kind of ironic juxtaposition to the kind of satanic imagery and uh, plot point that is in this film. And I think it's just an expression of Kubrick and his ironic and dark sense of humor but it also does a great job at making this scene feel a lot more uncomfortable because you have this entire Christmas aesthetic up until this point and even afterwards and when this point of the film finally gets introduced um it feels a lot more unsettling because this really dark thing is happening during one of the most joyous and what's supposed to be one of the more innocent times of the year. So what do I think about this film? What are my overall thoughts on this film? And where do I really rank this amongst everything that's in Kubrick's filmography? So first and foremost, I think this film is quite brilliant. Um, this is an amazing film in my opinion. And this is a film that I've probably seen at least three or four times. I obviously gave it a rewatch before doing this review. So it's really fresh in my mind and I can easily say that each time I watch it, it just gets better and better. Um, because the first time I watched it, like, yeah, I liked it, but I was kind of considering it to be, like, one of the lesser Kubrick films. But now at this point, I can easily say that it's in the top five. 
Um, I think it's probably like number five because it's it's really hard to put this above films like Barry Lyndon, Clockwork Orange, 2001, films like that. So even The Shining. So um, it's kind of hard to put it above those films, but it's still quite a brilliant film. And for this to be Stanley Kubrick's very last film, um, I think it's still quite an achievement. And it dives into some of the most ballsiest material that I've ever seen him do yet. But yeah, what can I say about this film? Uh, Stanley Kubrick, his fingerprints are obviously all over this film. It goes without saying that the cinematography, the score, the sound design, the production design, and all the aesthetic work is just stunning as pretty much every single Stanley Kubrick film is. Iconic satanic ritual orgy scene is absolutely unforgettable and honestly is one of the most memorable moments I think in all of Kubrick's filmography to be honest with you. And again, it's one of the more darker and ballsiest choices that I've ever seen Kubrick make in, in, in all of his films. So I really ap appreciate it and admire it on a really high level for that. And that kind of bridges me to talk about the themes of this film, which is obviously something that I think is really thought provoking. It's something else that I really admire. Um, yes, this film is, is a lot about marriage. It's also about the unshakable and unstoppable natural and humanistic feelings of jealousy and sexuality and how that intertwines with a long marriage and how we as human beings try our best to kind of cope with these contradicting feelings that we have which one of them is just having one partner and being secured with again one lifelong partner for the rest of your life and the other side of you that doesn't want to be tied down and wants to be more free-spirited and how all of that just ties into jealousy and sexuality and it kind of exposes the fact that we kind of we think we know what we want and whether it's just because we want to follow the, the societal norm and we think that's like the, the way we ought to do something or we're just kind of unwilling to sacrifice our inner desires for what we know is the more appropriate safe and good thing to do for our lives so yeah, it does dive into a lot of that, and I do love the way it expresses all of those themes, whether it's through Tom Cruise's character or Nicole Kidman's character. Tom Cruise's character in this film is obviously somebody that is motivated to go into the night and kind of have this sexual exploration um, because he feels like he just can't handle the mental unfaithfulness if that's what you want to call it that nicole kidman has had because it's not like nicole kidman has actually been unfaithful to tom cruise's character or anything like that at all but it's the kind of mental anguish that she expresses to him about how difficult it actually was for her to not be unfaithful and i think that jealousy kind of gives him the validation and the justification in his mind to kind of go out and have this secretive sexual exploration in a kind of spiteful and vengeful way when you think about it. But it doesn't stop there. Um, as I mentioned, I do consider this to be one of the ballsiest Stanley Kubrick films just because he decides to explore and dive into elite culture, which is something that I don't hear a lot of the actors and people that were involved in the film really talk about. They kind of just talk about what I just mentioned earlier about jealousy and marriage and all that stuff. But no one really feels comfortable talking about the elite class in this film and how they're depicted. Um, this film is really dark and scary because of how brutally honest this film attempts to dive in to elite culture and the wealth bubble. Because in my opinion, whether or not you want to accept it, Stanley Kubrick definitely wanted to send a message of how scary powerful the elite class is. And once you kind of enter that bubble and go down this really deep and dark rabbit hole, um, it basically makes it to where you cannot get out of it. Because once they have this kind of dirt on you, it seems like your life is always in a state of panic and always in a state of being threatened. And you feel like that they kind of just own you at that point because 
they now have something to always kind of blackmail you with. And in my opinion, it essentially expresses that with the elites, objectivity kind of just goes out the window because they have the power to control the narrative because a lot of them own the media and they own journalism in a way. And this film kind of expresses that point in this really darkly ambiguous and interpretive way um, when it comes to the death of the girl at the satanic ritual where she essentially chooses to redeem herself for Tom Cruise's character after he's exposed and found out to have infiltrated this ritual and she's found dead a day later and the newspaper says that she just OD'd. And then you have this really great scene between Tom Cruise's character and Sidney Pollock's character where they have this kind of debate and discussion about everything that happened at that ritual and whether or not the death of this woman was genuinely an overdose or whether or not she was actually murdered by the satanic cult. And Cooper makes it to where it's really up to the audience to decide what you genuinely think happened. And you can only go with the handful of information that is given to you in the film and you have to just go with what you think is more likely. And I think that's a really dark, scary, and disturbing concept because... It expresses that when it comes to these powerful people, reality starts getting kind of funky and you don't really know what to believe anymore. And I know that some people might say that I'm getting too conspiratorial and, you know, I'm going a little crazy with this whole Illuminati angle and stuff. But it's just the fact that this film was brave enough to really talk about how powerful the elite class is and I like the way it expressed that. So I apologize, but I can't talk about this film without talking about Kubrick's death and the conspiracy theory surrounding his death. Um, because it's not about whether or not I believe all of it, but it's just, it's too, it's too fascinating and too disturbing to not talk about it. Because it's also incredibly relational to some of the meanings of the film as well, in terms of what it was expressing about powerful people. But anyway, um, yeah, so... I think most of you kind of already know all this because there are thousands of videos on YouTube already that discusses everything that happened post-production of this film in terms of Stanley Kubrick uh, screening this film for the MPAA and the MPAA board members basically just told Kubrick that he had to cut I believe 15 to 20 minutes out of this satanic ritual orgy scene I believe in order to make an R rating. It was either they weren't going to release it at all or he was going to get an NC-17 rating, which he obviously didn't want for marketing reasons and for just uh, overall accessibility reasons. But basically what happened was, at least according to some witnesses that were there, he was just having like a screaming match with the board members and he just kind of stormed out the door incredibly pissed off. And before that, he basically died before the film could be publicly released and he could actually be vocal about the film and discuss it in interviews. So the obvious conspiracy around that is that the elite class got to him and they killed him. As simple as that. Um, they say that maybe they didn't want him to talk about this film in depth the way that he wanted to. But of course this is all just conjecture and speculation. Uh, there's no real direct evidence to really prove any of this. But a lot like this film, it's just you kind of have to go with the likelihood of it. You only have a handful of information and you just kind of have to believe what you think is more reasonable and what's more likely. But what's also interesting is that you can't help but wonder what the hell was in those 15 to 20 minutes of film that were cut out of it. Some people say that the sexuality was just too overbearing and too explicit, which is something that I can see. And then some people also say that there was also notions of pedophilia that were thrown in the mix, which is something that I can also see, and the only reason why I say that is because it's kind of hinted at even earlier in the film when it comes to the Rainbow Shop's owner and his daughter, and later in the film, he basically reveals that he's selling his underage daughter to men for sex, and the film obviously chose to express notions of pedophilia and a bit of sex trafficking in a way, so... I can also see that occurring, which is also scary and disturbing. But all right, I'm done talking about the conspiracy shit. It's just that I think it's a really fascinating topic. And um, especially what happened to Kubrick after this film was done. 
Um, it's just kind of impossible for me to talk about this film without bringing up these really fascinating and also oddly disturbing topics that revolve around this film. But anyways, I haven't given a grade for this film yet, so I'm going to go ahead and do that. Just know that I think that this is one of the darkest and most disturbing Christmas films that I've personally ever seen. I'm sure there's other films out there that are probably more traumatizing and more disturbing. But in terms of just having unsettling and dark themes, um, this is really up there for me. And obviously, I think Kubrick really knocked it out of the park when it comes to his filmmaking ability in this film. Um, I love the ballsiness of this film. I love the themes that are tackled in this film. It's a film that once you watch it, you truly can't shake it away. So I'm going to give Eyes Wide Shut a 9 out of 10. Well, I hope you guys really enjoy what I had to say about Eyes Wide Shut. Merry Christmas to everybody. Happy Holidays and a Happy New Year. Um, I hope you guys have stayed safe and had a really fun time through the holidays. This is actually one of the more memorable holidays that I've had in quite a while, so um, I'm really thankful for that. But anyways, if you really enjoyed what I had to say about Eyes Wide Shut, please give this video a thumbs up and share it amongst your friends. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel to be updated on more film-related content.